Hi, thank you for visiting my RC channel. My name is Bill and I'm a RC radio control enthusiast and I also do RC reviews. Thank you for joining me. The big question that is being asked about this SJRC F11 and the ZLRC SG906 Beast is what is the difference between these great low cost, long flying time GPS 5G Wi Fi FPV quadcopter drones? And which is better? Well, they're both similar in size. There's only less than two grams weight difference between them. I've got a flying time of 25 minutes with this. I've got a flying time of 21 minutes with this. This is more solid. It feels stronger. This is less solid, but in my opinion, looks better. Both sturdy. As far as flying performance goes, I really cannot say there's any difference. They both have GPS, but this has optical flow as well if you can get it to stay in mode 1. Both have 1806 brushless motors. Both lock onto GPS satellites quite quickly. This one easier and quicker than this one, but not a big fuss. Both good with waypoint navigation. This does circle mode well, this doesn't. It just turns the camera upside down. So we're getting onto the app. And when we talk about the app for these two, the app for the Beast is far better, far more stable, and has more, far more features than the SJRC F11. But the SJRC F11 has an SD card on board. And the beast does not. But there's a trade-off. You've got the optical flow. And at 1080p, when it comes to the cameras, which is one of the big issues, uh, the beast at 1080p with anti-shake or EIS on is very good. The SJRC11 does not have this. SJRC F11 also cannot record a 2K video, but the Beast can, but you cannot record in anti-shake mode at 2K. Gesture modes on both of these with the apps, I uh, had a little bit of success, but follow me, the SJRC performs better. Both Return to home functions work very well with this. On low battery warning, the SJRC will return to home if you're beyond 30 meters when you get a low battery warning or land within 30 meters. The beast will do the same but will also return to home within if you are within 30 meters. Signal loss when I turned off the controllers on both of these. No response, but then it's connected to the app, and I did not shut the app down, but I think it will hold stable until low battery, and both of them will return to home. Radio controllers. There's no doubt that the Beast has a better radio controller. It feels good, nice to hold, got the strong thumb things on, but there is an issue where this left hand stick can stick, which is not good. 
when it comes to holding a mobile device much better than this This also has a stand and I've actually looked inside this and this has two antennas so I haven't really looked into this but it doesn't matter. Um, this does not feel good in my hands and if you power it on and power it off it doesn't even power off straight away much more user friendly much more awkward but the real question about these two and the important thing is range and the camera so let's have a look and see okay gonna do a range test now with this SG 906 Beast. I've got a Firefly Fortress microcam mounted on top with a 5.8 gigahertz VTX that I'm going to use to test range once we lose Wi-Fi FPV and then continue and follow it on my 5.8 gigahertz monitor with DVR here now I don't recommend you do this, I always recommend that you fly within line of sight but I'm doing this in a controlled and safe environment so if you do, do something, want to do something like this please do it in a controlled and safe environment otherwise always fly within line of sight unfortunately we're going to be going into the sun so I know the distances from this direction are not from the uh, and the landmarks, but not from the opposite direction. So let me just get it ready to go. Okay, I'm just going to go into settings. Now, yesterday there was an app update. I'm not sure if it's a firmware update to fix 4K photos. So I don't know if this is going to help stabilize 4K video but or 2k video but I've got that on I'm also going to put anti-shaking on if you need to do an update you just press update here go to here safety confirmation okay, I'm going to start recording video And to start the motors and to take off right. start recording video on the DVR here okay and take it up Yeah, I'm going to take it up to a height of 20 meters. Twelve meters, thirteen. Okay, there we are at uh, twenty two meters. Okay, I'll stick there. I'm just going to do a pan for video. So that you can also get some video not going into directly into the sunlight. Just move the camera up a bit more. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to take it forward.
So there, at a distance of 57 meters, still at an altitude of 22 meters. Go forward some more. At a distance of 80 meters. Go forward some more. Still got Wi Fi FPV. Just pan it to see. Now we're at a distance of 71 meters. Going to go forward some more. Okay, we're at a distance of 96 meters. But what I want to do now is I want to stop video so that I can make sure we save it. I'm going to start video again. Let's check. Yeah, we still got Wi Fi FPV. Let's go ahead and go further. Okay, at 99 meters, have I still got Wi-Fi FPV? No, I'm turning the craft, but I've lost Wi-Fi FPV now. So I'd say Wi-Fi FPV range 100 meters. Now I'm going to continue following on the DVR here and see how far we can get. Okay, still going forward. It says it's still recording video on the Wi Fi, but I doubt it. Okay, now it stopped at about 400 meters because that barrier in the picture over there is at 500 meters. Let me try and go more forward. No. Okay, so it looks as though it got geofenced at a distance of 400 meters. Okay, let me press return to home on the app and nothing happening because it's lost Wi-Fi. Press return to home on the radio controller. Now it's going to turn around and come back. So, yeah, it looks so like maximum range, 400 meters. So, you know, basically keeps it within line of sight and control. Should see the video a bit better now. Coming back. Well, on the DVR at any rate. Um, And we're locked on to 15 satellites.
So, here it is ahead, preparing to come down. Turning around, facing away before it comes down. That is it landed. So that's the range with this 906 beast. FPV 100 meters, distance 400 meters. And I'm going to do the same thing with the SJRC F11 now. Start the motors and take off. Right. And I'm going to take it up to 22 meters as well. Let's take it up just a little bit more. Right there we're also at about 22 meters. Just adjust the camera angle a bit. Okay, so here we also got an onboard SD card. So let me take it forward. There we add about 48 meters. Oh, I didn't do a pan. Let me do a pan for video while I'm here. So this is 1080p at 25 frames per second. Okay, let's push ahead again. Okay, at a distance of 68 meters. No, hang on, saying a distance of 87 meters. And I've still got FPV, but it seems as though it's frozen now. I got on the main DVR screen here, but frozen on the phone, FPV. So I'd say also uh, only 80 meters. FPV range and now I'm going to go ahead and further now with on the DVR also just going to stop and save video there start video again carry on Getting a low battery on the Firefly micro camera, but let's just carry on um, and see.
We're coming up to 500 meters with that barrier in the picture here, there. Okay, so that's a distance of 500 meters and still going. Over 600 meters. Still going forward. Okay, that's 700 meters and we're still going forward. Uh, over 800 meters now, still going ahead. Okay, losing FPV now on the DVR. Okay, now I picked it up again. Okay, that's 900 meters. Okay, so quite a bigger range than 400 meters for the beast. So I'm going to press return to home. Now it's going to turn around and come back. Here it comes. Okay, stopping overhead, turning around, facing away, and now descending and coming into land.
and going to land almost exactly where it took off. So the SJRC F11, uh, about the same range, uh, Wi-Fi FPV, but a much further range with the radar controller, at least 900 meters, which is further than the beast at a limit of 400 meters. Both of these only go to a maximum altitude of 120 meters. And unfortunately, I see on forums people complaining because it only goes to 120 meters. And how can they make it go more than 120 meters? And the only thing I can say is if you want to fly higher than 120 meters and possibly endanger passenger aircraft, lose sight and control and break regulations regarding UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles, please do not buy a UAV and be irresponsible unless you're prepared to get the qualifications and the necessary permissions to fly higher than 120 meters in a safe and controlled environment. So this is the question answered between these two as far as range goes.
Got the SG906 beasts ready to try and fly indoors. I don't really recommend this, particularly in a confined space. But I'm doing this just to test mode 1, where it can't pick up any GPS satellites indoors. And also to see how the optical flow holds. So we'll start it up. So good. Okay, it's not really holding position that well with the optical flow. not really recommended and now I just want to test the gesture mode to see if it'll take picture and video so if I do this starting to count down to take a picture I want to start video do this and now the video is recording and Stop video, I do that, and video has stopped recording. Do this, and now video is recording. And I may try and test this in a much bigger space and see how, if, how, if it works any better indoors too. And I'm going to try the same thing with the SJRC F11 indoors with the gesture mode. So let me tap on gesture mode, say OK. And do this. Nothing's happening. Let me try a video signal. Nothing's happening. Go out, go back in again. Nothing. And nothing. So, I've never managed to get the gesture mode to work on this, but it works quite nicely on the SG906 Beast. So that basically covers everything with these low-cost GPS, Wi-Fi, FPV quadcopter drones. Now different features will appeal to each individual differently. But overall, in my opinion, I would say the Beast is better. Mainly because of the camera and the app. I like the field of view of the camera. I like the colors. I like the flatter horizon, I like the 4K pictures, there is a bit of jello still on the video even in anti-shake mode, and when it comes to Wi-Fi FPV on both of these, they both aren't great, and range, you know, limited range of 400 meters is not a problem for me, as I think it's best to fly line of sight and keep it where you can see it and manage to control it better and unfortunately there have been issues with the SJRC F11 camera 
and it also losing connectivity with the app and issues with the app where it's probably still too early to tell with this one but the game might change very quickly soon because the new SJRC F11 Pro is available to pre-order I'll put a link in the description for this too and this is coming out with a 2k camera so if it does come out with a good camera that is much better than this and possibly even better than this then that'll be another option to consider too so I hope you found this helpful and beneficial if you're looking at these two and deciding between either one or looking at buying either one of these and if you have one already so please subscribe like comment and share if you like my videos